right, so guys, I don't know if um, you know Mahlij. Here she is. She is former. Oh, Actually, uh, you tell us about yourself, Mahlij. You tell us about um, yourself. Well, I am Canadian now, but I'm born uh, Pakistani. I've been in Canada for 20 years. So now I've officially lived longer in Canada than I lived in Pakistan. Um, yeah. So my family is a mix of different religions, you know, like um, my grandfather was a Parsi, Zoroastrian, and then my grandmother was a Muslim. So I come from a very uh, complex background. Oh, wow. um, growing up there, when I came here, I was a teenager. So I remember most of the stuff that used to happen, you know, and um, now that I see it here, you know, it's just, um, yeah, it, you know, when we came here, so like for me as a teenager, I was like, oh my God, we're running away from here. We're going to be free. This is going to be a fresh start. We're never going to have to see these things again. Oh my God. Boom. 20 years later, you're like, what the you What's know going on? <laughs> where did it go wrong like what happened like where am i gonna go now which country should i go to now it's like you know so um yeah that's a little bit of my background um i was involved a lot of um a lot in media so i was a former miss pakistan which was actually a uh, competition based in canada in toronto um when i won that pageant because I was not involved too much in the Pakistani community. I didn't have too many Pakistani friends. I just did that pageant. And then the news got big and bigger and bigger. And it was just a like a whole can of worms that opened. And it was just a, yeah, it was just like the hate that I received at that time on the internet. I was just like, wow, the comments like, oh my God, she should be killed. She should be, her head should be shaved. She should be shot between her eyes. And I was like, what is, and I was literally scared when I was, um, this was in 2007 and eight, And I was getting threats here in Canada from people in Canada. And, you know, so then I was like, you know what, I'm going to die one day anyways. If I die like this, hey, you know, I've died for a cause. So that gave me more motivation and strength to, you know, uh, come out and speak out about it. And then I went to Pakistan too. After two years, I went there. I worked in the industry there. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there's good and bad to everything. And uh, as much as I would say that I do miss Pakistan as a country, that's where my childhood was. Yeah. Um, I can't go back there. No. You know. No. So that's a little bit about me. <laughs> so what have you done? Actually, I have a, before we get started, because I can't believe that this happened to you inside of Canada. Did you go to authorities? Did you like, did you alert anybody? Was anything done? Did these people get punished? for? What well, they were uh, at the time, um, the woman that was running that pageant, um, she was the one that they were calling and threatening. So nobody really had my number. Uh, but for me, I started getting threats and stuff. Um, in 2017 when i did this event with Tariq fateh and uh, there was a couple of there was this one guy actually he was um really after me he used to actually date that organized who organized the pageant so he started talking to me and he was hitting on me he only came to that event and you know what he said at the event he's like i only came here to check out your ass and then he goes on, oh, I hated that event, and Tariq Fateh is this and that and blah, blah, blah. And I'm trying to communicate with him, telling him, you know, um, that, uh, you know, it's not, I was the organizer. I don't control what people are going to say. You know, I was just managing that event. So what he did, um, he went on and he opened up a page, Facebook page, Mahali Sarkari, the porn star. And he started posting everything I would post on my page, oh my which was okay. I'm like, you know what, whatever. I got it deleted a couple of times, reported it. He would put it back up. Then one day I went there and he posted my daughter's picture. Oh my God. And he called her a bitch. Do you understand how low you have to be to go after my daughter? And I was so angry and fuming that I didn't screenshot that thing, but I called the cops. Okay. And I called the cops and I told them, I'm like, you know, and they came and they're like, well, there's not much we can do because, um, you know, he deleted the page. He deleted the page because I sent him a message. I said, I know what you're doing, but now you've crossed all boundaries. And now I will call, cross all my boundaries. 
Um, and he's like, messages me the next morning. I don't know what you're talking about, blah, blah, blah. Anyhow, I called the cops. They said they couldn't do anything because the page wasn't there. Uh, unless he was harassing me. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Because he sent me so many messages, message after message after message and voice notes. Not just, I'm like, what is this? Don't you think this is harassment? And then, anyways, he didn't get charged, but he did get a phone call from the cops. And you know what he said to the cops? He's like, yeah, tell her to stop calling me. And the cop was laughing. Yeah, that's Because he, he read all the messages and stuff. And I was just like, and then I had another friend of mine, this girl that used to do my makeup. I introduced her in, to so many people, linked her up. And she's she's actually an Amadi. You know Amadi Muslim? Yeah. So she herself is considered a non-Muslim in Pakistan. Okay, this girl dresses like us. She does drugs, drinks, has a Sikh boyfriend, like everything against the religion. And she was arguing with me and telling me she was threatening me because I'm talking like about her religion. And I'm like, like, come on, the, you are the biggest hypocrite. So I called the cops on her as well. Before she was just telling me, I did it. And then that stopped. Um, so there has been a couple of times. And now lately, I've been getting a lot of hate and a lot of threatening messages from people living in Mississauga, Milton, Oakville, you know? These are Islamists. So, these are the Islamists, correct? Of course, yeah. yeah. These are, the I would say, the mullahs. The, these are, the like you call them, wolf in sheep clothing. They pretend to be the moderate Muslims. But they're not. There's nothing moderate about them because their brain is still in the 1400s. You know what I mean? So uh, you have seen some of my posts that I've been posting because I screenshot every, I screenshot everything. And I, you know what? I like it when they call me all these names because especially from Canada, because it gives me the opportunity to blast them all over social media to show Canadians, look who's between you. Because Canadians, I'm sorry, the Canadians here, I am very sorry. You guys are so stupid. I am sorry to say this, but like for you guys, you have to spell it out, show it to you, and you still don't believe us. No, you, there's, there's women that will come up to me and be like, you're being a racist. And I'm like, first of all, I'm brown. They're brown. Like, how can I be a racist? You know, I'm like, you got to come up with something better. They call me a racist. They call me a misogynist, bigot. And no no massages, sorry, bigot and Islamophobe. And you know what I tell them? Turn I tell the them, you know, on you your work phone. me. Uh, the, vo the volume on your phone, can you lower it? Sure. sure. Sorry. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Or use better? headphones. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, you were saying? So, no, they, they try to play those cards with me as well. You know, Islamophobe. If they were to do it to any other white person, you know, they would be like, okay, you know what, let's not. And I know a lot of people don't speak up because of that. But when they start this with me, I'm like, you know what, this will play with other people. You can't play that card with me. I tell them straight up. I'm like, I have more Muslim friends and people that I know I've worked with, um, you know, Muslims. Half of my family is Muslim. You're going to call me Islamophobe. You're going to call me racist. You know, I'm like, it doesn't work with me. You can work with the white people, call them and fool them. But you cannot fool me. I'm one of you. I know you. That's, That's the thing with us, Iman. We are one of them, so we know them from within. That's what people don't understand. I tried. Now, like, I want to go back a little bit, and I agree with everything you're saying. I, I understand it 100%, and it's good that you're saying this. By the way, a lot of people are saying, say hi to Mahlij, Miss Pakistan. Hi. Say I'm, hi. I, 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 <laughs> everything is the, the chat, so... I wanted I wanted to let you know I wanted people to know how I found out about you first. I saw you on YouTube before anything, okay? And then okay. I I saw uh, a little bit uh, on Instagram, especially like your makeup tutorials and stuff. And then oh. you added me on Facebook, and I was like, oh my god, she added me. <laughs> so that's how we were introduced to each other. Now what? Mm. Tell me when you found out about, because we're talking about the Islamic call to prayer that's going on in Canada right now. When did you first find out about it and what did you feel? You, you mean when I woke up? up? When, when did I wake up? When did okay, so, I woke you up? So, you know, I was working a lot in the industry. Um, when the whole news broke about me winning Miss Pakistan, 
what that woman that organized that event, she knew I wasn't a Muslim. She knew I was Farsi. But she said, if we if we post it in the news that you're a Farsi, nobody's going to give a shit. She's like, to ignite and make this thing go viral, she created a fake news. She created a news saying that I was Muslim. Second thing she said was that I was in love with the president at that time who was prime, um, Musharraf, right? General Musharraf. Yeah. So it uh, sparked and that news actually went viral. We were invited to uh, Dubai and um, uh, for a really big TV show and interview and stuff. Um, and I had to actually face a lot of people that were like, why would you do this? Why are you, you know? So from then onwards, I went back to Pakistan. I worked in the media up there and I was treated with respect. You know, nobody disrespected me or nobody ever came to my face or said anything to me. Yeah. Um, mind you that I never spoke about the religion as much at that time because I was I was liberal, you know, I was like everybody fun, you know, love and this and I still do that. Um I was working in Mississauga for a TV channel with few people that are heavily involved in the politics now. Okay. And uh then M one oh three came up, right? So when M one oh three came up and I was like, wait a minute, what is is this the blasphemy law because i know a lot about the blasphemy law and that was my wake up you know and then i just woke up and i'm like i have been in between all of them you know i have been in between this and i never could see it i could not see it when but when you step back and then you're like oh my god i'm like this is this is like this is too much so that was my wake up call when I, you know, and we're so busy in our lives. So are many of my friends, girlfriends, Muslims, you know, that they don't even know what's happening because it's happening so quietly. The call to prayer was done so quietly. Did you hear about it? Did anybody hear about it? No, nobody knew. It just happened. You know, so everything happening, creeping in, in our system. In my the province there was uh, no when i spoke to my counselor he didn't even know that there was a vote so that tells you uh, a lot now Mahlij, <laughs> where i come from i'm from saudi arabia okay yeah. the mosques and and this is what i i try to explain to people is that it's not they they keep comparing it canadians compare mosques to like you know temples a church now, where I come from, mosques are used to surveil us in our local communities. And if you don't go to the mosque to pray, especially as a man, the imam will come knocking at the door and he will ask, where are you? Why aren't you coming to pray? And then, you know, they punish you. They escalate it. You go to court. And if you don't go to the mosque to pray, you end up going to jail. They treat you as if you have left Islam. What is your experience in Pakistan or what do you know about mosques from your culture? So, um, see, the, the way I grew up, um, my mom's family was very open-minded, very liberal. They were from the city. Yeah. And my dad's family came from um, the village side, like interior. You know, they were the landlords. And uh, yeah. so uh, I got to see two different sides of it. When my mom would go to the village, she would cover her face, you know, when she came into the city, she hardly even wore that shawl. Right. Um, so there were two different things that I saw as per se uh, religion part on me. It wasn't that force because even though my father uh, came from there, he wasn't very religious. Like I didn't see him pray much and stuff. So we weren't um, pressured. Pakistan is because it has some what democracy. It's not as bad. You're not forced to go up there but everything else exists there like you know in ramadan um you can't eat outside you know as a woman we still have to dress decent if we're going outside if um we were never allowed to leave you know our house alone we had to be accompanied by somebody and that was for our own protection you know yeah so i don't really have much experience with moss to be honest um I don't remember ever going to a mosque. The only mosque I remember going to was when I went back to Pakistan and I went to a mosque in Islamabad because it's a very beautiful mosque. It's like, a, for me, it was like an architectural uh, real thing that I wanted to go see up there, but not to go pray or anything, you know? Okay. Um, but uh, we used to definitely hear the prayer to call, you know? Um, 
Did it, Five times. <laughs> did it bother you? Do you remember negative, you know, memories? Like, why do you not want to hear I, it now? When I was in the village, because of memories that I have from the village uh, as a child, of course, there was good memories with my cousins and with my aunts and stuff. But then um, the whole part that affected me was how my father and his family, men in his family were, they used the religion to control women. You know, like the women were very much oppressed. My mother was abused, like to the poor, to a point where one night she almost, he, he had actually planned to kill her. But because he was so drunk, he just passed out. But he had everything. It was me and my little sister. And I, I believe I was like around maybe five or six. Yeah. So he raped her first. And then he passed out. He was going to like the whole village heard her screaming and crying. But there was no help. Nobody would come out to help. And these men were helping him. And always putting things in his hair. You know, so for me... um, that's what it reminds me because I remember hearing, you know, the azan. And every time I do hear it, it just, I don't know, it just brings some kind of a negative vibe inside me. It's something hearing those words. It just takes me back. For example, this whole week, all this has been going on, right? So yesterday I sat here and I was just, I was really depressed. And I was watching this movie and it was about the same story, it happens like, you know, the mother takes the kid and she runs away and she's wearing the burqa and the man is abusing. And there was a scene where, you know, she was getting beaten and the kids were there. And the little kid, get, and I got to see that over and over and over again. And I just bawled last night. I was like, you know, just all this issue is bringing back all those memories that were put away far behind. Like, they're there, but, you know, we've moved on from there. But now it's like you guys bringing this all up, it's bringing those memories. They're like fresh to me. And I was thinking about my daughter. And I was like, what if my daughter like have to see that, you know, in the future? Because the way we're going, that's what's going to be. Um, so, you know, the words, it's just every time I hear that, even when I went back to Pakistan and every time I heard it, yeah, it doesn't affect me as much, but it gives me that negative vibe. But for somebody like my mom or my uncle's, it gives them PTSD. They, they can't handle it, you know, because they were only doing it because of that religion. You know, it gives you the right to do whatever the hell you want to the woman. Treat them however you want. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you wouldn't call it soothing hearing the oh, call to prayer? There's nothing soothing about it, to me at least. You know, some people might find it soothing. You know, it depends. It's just not every music is for me. You know, I don't like all the music and stuff. And plus, some of the imams, like, they don't have a singing voice. They don't even know how to catch the tunes. So you just like... <laughs> what, where I come from, Mahlij, this is hilarious. Where I come from, they're so lazy, right? We pray five times a day. Everything shuts down, right? So the yeah. imams, they don't want to get up five times a day to pray. So they hire an Indian or a Pakistani guy. They pay him money and he's like, hello, he stands up and they scream. <laughs> they don't even try to make it sound good. Yeah. So it's well, just. You see, see the verse, Allahu Akbar, right? Yeah. That itself, that itself, anytime like I hear it, just kind of gives me the, you know. How <laughs> the many people myself, have like, been, like, how many infidels, how many Christians, how many atheists, how many Muslims, how many Jews have been killed after that word was said yeah Allah that's what they do Allah done yeah so but soothing know, it's, uh, it's very soothing imagine, imagine somebody <laughs> whose family was killed like that in the middle east yeah and you know and they pray they pray upon it right um the azan will be done and they have to hear that imagine what brings back to them you know just because i'm saying this because this whole week i'm telling you i didn't i didn't even know i don't cry i just sat here and i cried so much yesterday i was just like bawling my eyes out and i'm like i don't understand and then it just happens to be the movie i picked was this story and then i'm like you know what wait a minute i'm like this is all because of this whole issue that has been going on this whole week it, there's no reason why i would be thinking about all those things because all those memories like it was just a flashback after flashback in front of my face and some of these people are just like it's only a noise it's like honking horns outside it's like bells like 
<laughs> Funny how, you know, they're all about uh, mental health and, uh, you know, they tweet about whatever, Bell Roger, mental. But when we start to complain, they're like, why? Why? It's just like a bell noise, you know? Because our mental uh, health is not important. What do you Mental think? health oh, of yeah. certain people only, if, you know? Mental health, our mental health, if you are sitting here and saying, okay, yeah, the Azan is bothering you, you're Islamophobe. You don't have mental problems. You're Islamophobe. You're a bigot. That's it. You know, you're not mentally ill. You have no right to be mentally ill. You have no right for nothing. And um, because I have a lot of groups that I've joined on Facebook, and some of them are from the Pakistani community, and then some of them are from, you know, people that are against it and people for it. So I get to see both parts, right? Both sides. And I've seen like one group, you, you, I don't know if you're part of it too, um, Ram, he's the one that is collecting uh, funds yes. to take court, right? Yes. So another mom's group, I don't know who put me in there, but people keep adding me to groups, was reporting that page, saying that it was hate. And I went there and I'm like, where's the hate? Where's the hate for somebody to ask them for their own rights? Or oh, it is our right. It's a democracy. I'm like, well, same applies to me. It's a democracy. It's my right. Yeah. It's your right to practice your religion. And it is my right to refuse that I have to listen to your sermon. Okay? It is my right in a democracy. And then, I don't know if you saw that one screenshot that I posted. Yes. So... I have a lot of people that are very much in the liberal party in Mississauga. Okay. They are like um, left, right hands of Bonnie Crombie. Oh, yeah. And, uh, so I was looking at this and um, uh, uh, what's her name? Sue McFennan, I think it yeah. was. Yeah. He was one that uh, revised the whole thing, right? Yes. So um, there was a post about saying, you know, um, it was good that they changed. They kept the decision of keeping the prayers and la, 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 la. I'm like, okay. And then um, some guy comes in there and he's like, but I was very disappointed with Sue. She did la, la, la. And he went off on her. Yeah. And then Sue herself. Yeah, yeah I saw I it. She's watching. Like, oh, but have oh you God. ever had any counselor on your Facebook page comment to you? Have you ever? Never. Never, but Sue herself was there yeah. saying that it wasn't, she was trying to please them still. And then Bonnie jumps in, yeah. the mayor jumps in. This is how important these people are to them. Yeah. The mayor jumps in there. I have like talked about so many issues. I've never had a counselor. Ne nobody ever comments on my thing. You know what I mean? But for them. This is what it is. It's like, it doesn't matter how many favors you have done for them, Sue. Now that you have said one thing, you're done. You are done. They will not reelect you next time. Um, so, you know, when I see all these comments and stuff, um, even on one comment, the guy was like, it's the majority. The majority spoke and the majority won. So majority said they wanted prayers. And so I'm like, okay, so the next day, majority is going to be like, okay, you know what? In the month of Ramadan, nobody is going to eat outside in Mississauga. If the majority does that, then I guess you have to follow the majority. It's a democracy, right? Yeah. If the majority says we all have to wear uh, the black uh, yeah. burqas, yeah, then we have to wear it because the majority wins. Well, in that sense, that's what I was saying. I'm like, oh, so you're waiting to be in more majority so you can impose Sharia law on us. Well, in many you... ways, that's what's happening. You have a bunch of Islamist men. I can't believe, like, guys, if you're watching, whoever's watching, go over to Mahlija's Facebook page. You're going oh, yeah, to you're see screenshots of everything she's talking about. Bonnie Crombie and this Sue McFadden, they are in there begging these Islamist men who are trashing them. I saw one of the Facebook messages open public was, I think, Bonnie Crombie, telling a man who's threatening her, telling her we're not going to vote for you because you shouldn't have even introduced a revision. She's saying to him, I just sent you a direct message, but you're not, you didn't respond. These are the council and the mayor yeah. talking this way to their constituents. And we are getting trashed and ignored and called racists. And we are the one who fled all of this. <laughs> 
So what do you the think? The thing is, the arguments, what are the arguments being put forward, right? Um, the, they were, there was like, oh, you know what? If you were to take this to court, you would never win and this and this. Because church bells are allowed and they keep, this is the first argument is if church can ring bells, then we should have our sermon. So let me just clear you something. Church bells are not allowed. Not in every town. Okay. The last time I heard church bell was when I used to live across from a church in downtown. And we used to hear, and that was 20 years ago. I live in a town. We do have a church here with a bell. I've never heard that bell ring. It used to ring a long time ago, but not anymore. So there's no church bells going on. Besides that, yeah. there's a difference between um, a sound yeah. and a verse. Yeah. Okay? A sound going ding, 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 maybe once, twice, maximum 12 times. What is that going to do to you? That is not so, like sending you any messages in your head. No. But sitting there saying, Allah is great. Allah is great. Allah is great. Allah is great. And it's oh, there's only one prophet, and there's only one Allah, and that's this is why do I have to keep hearing it? That is something that is brainwashing. Yeah, you're sending signals into other people's heads. It's down. You know, so there's a huge difference. I cannot believe these people are like. Well, there's sounds outside from the cars and people playing their loud music. I'm like, well, if you're playing after eleven o'clock, you can call the cops because that's why we have bylaws, right? But we have bylaws for people like us. There's no bylaws for them. Wow. <laughs> it's, they just know our laws yeah. so well. Well, they've been studying they the West. Twists and turns and use all that. They come here. Like you were, I was listening to one of your video, and you said that they come here. And you will see the first thing they attack is they will become lawyers. Oh, yeah. They want to be lawyers because they want to know the laws. Yeah. They want to know how they can manipulate the laws. And then you will see a lot of these politicians that are in the cabinet. They're all, they were all lawyers first. Yeah. You know, the mayor of uh, England, what was he? He was a Sadiq Khan. Oh, was he was he a lawyer. lawyer. Oh. Yeah. He was a lawyer. He defended one of the terrorists before he became a law, uh, be the mayor. Do you know that? No. And no. if you take it up here, Ikra Khalid, what was she? What she did her law, and now she be like. If you pick up a lot of these uh, um, MPs and stuff that are in the politics, they all learn the law. If you know the law, you know the way in and out, right? Then they get into your education system. Yes, because in the education system, you can twist and turn and just you know, um, basically brainwash. Lead, yeah, brainwash them. And uh, force your propaganda and your stories, you know, yeah. onto them. Then they get into your forces, police, yeah. and all that. Because now they've got control. Yeah. And once they become in majority, that's it. That's it. You're done, you know? And they're infiltrating very fast. I've been trying, and uh, I now the area that I'm in is not as bad as where you are, but we're quickly, rapidly approaching. Have you heard from other Muslims, Mahlij? What do they think? Practicing Muslims, not fundamentalists, not Islamists, regular Muslims. Have you spoken to your local community about the Azan? What did they give you for feedback? Well, I don't live in a community where there's anybody. Believe okay. me, I since I, yeah. since I've been in Canada, I'm sorry. I live in the whitest neighborhood. Yeah, I don't because I just know what's gonna happen there. If I live in a Pakistani neighborhood, all the aunties will be like, "Look at that girl. She smokes. Oh, look at her clothes. Oh, there's <laughs> men coming. I don't live there. I live in a white, peaceful community. Um, and um, but from what I have seen from online that I've interacted with people. A lot of my friends, one friend li that lives in um, Scarborough, I was just talking to her um, and that's what she was saying. She's like, you know, where she lives, it's uh, it's all Maldives, you know, all just the, like, you know, yeah. the Islamists, like you yeah. would say. And that's what she was saying. She's like, I don't uh, talk to any of the women. I don't like to get my kids involved into them. And that's what they were saying, that there's no need for the Azan, you know? And there's a lot of people like that. There's a, like, and especially a lot of women, yeah. you know? Um, so I'm not saying here that, you know, um, 
all the Muslims are like this. All the Muslims are like, no, majority of my followers are Muslims. Majority of people that I hang out with are Muslims. And they're not for it. Yeah. But the thing is, they cannot speak up. They cannot because as soon as they open their mouth about something, the whole community is going to eat them alive. You know, a lot of them don't even follow the religion or belief per se, but they cannot come out and say it because their community, their parents, and, you know, there can be so many complications. So they just say they're Muslim. That's it. And they don't follow anything. But like I said, you know, a lot of them have been against it because for me, if you want to hear the Azan and you want to hear it five times, go live in a country that yeah. will, you exactly. know, there's countries for that. Yeah, go. I mean, there's plenty. Why must we do it here? <laughs> I don't understand this. How do, do you not understand? Do you understand the joy that was in Pakistan and other countries? Go watch the uh, videos on YouTube. All around the world, first time in Canada, yeah, there was Azan. The sound of Azan touched the sky. It is a victory. Yeah. You guys don't get it. It's a victory for them. No, okay. They're conquering over the West. The Canadians that I live amongst here see this as diversity. And if I say anything, they don't know how to respond to me without calling me a white supremacist. So they just stop talking to me. That's what ends up happening to me. Have you had yeah. Canadians come to you and say, and by Canadians, I mean white people. Oh, look at your skin color. Oh, look, look, where are you from? And then if you say anything about Islam, oh my God, you're an Islamophobe. Have you had that? They love I your skin. Have, <laughs> to be honest, I, um, since I had a child, I've cut like my circle into none. Okay. I have like very few people that I hang out with and I spend my time with. And if I do, it's mostly like online that, you know, yeah. people will come there and they don't know me. They don't know nothing about me. And they will just be like, eh, la, 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 la. and I'm like, you know what? It's not your fault. It's not your fault. You've never lived under in strict rules. You've never, you've had your freedom. So you don't know what it feels like to lose it. You know, mm -hmm. you will only know it if you've never had it. It's like women like us, you know, uh, I, somebody was writing in the comment that we're, a woman was writing that we're dressed like this because, you know, we weren't allowed to. Yes, it is that, but it's our choice. However we want to dress. Sometimes I want to dress like this. Sometimes I want to show a little bit more, whatever. It's my choice. That is the beauty about this country is that it's my choice. I just you know? find it I, hysterical. How many YouTubers, I follow a lot of YouTubers and many of them present in less than what I am wearing and what you are wearing. But when we dress this way, suddenly it becomes a problem, which is interesting. Yeah. Very. It's interesting. not a problem for me because uh, because I worked in the media. So a lot of my following comes from this is 10 years, like people that are people that have followed me for 10 years yeah. and they hear what I say. Um, I usually I don't talk about religion, but I mostly hit the uh, human right points. You know, like I speak a lot about women's issues. Good. But the problem is any issue that I pick up. They always bring Islam in it. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, you know what? You just cannot pick it out because anytime I'm talking about women issue, they're like, women shouldn't be dressed like this. Women shouldn't be swearing. You should be covering your head. And that's uh, so I'm like, <laughs> what? I, you, you're the one bringing the religion into this. I didn't even involve religion. I just said that a woman should have a right. And they're angry about it. They don't want women Do to have, have rights. Islam stamped on us somewhere. Am I missing something? <laughs> Are we supposed to represent Islam? Anyway, what what should we do? Tell me. How do we fix this? <laughs> what do we do? Just, I guess, we just create awareness. Um, the thing is, we can only fix it if the government's going to fix it. Like me and you, we're not, you know... And the thing is, whenever we speak about these things, a lot of people don't understand that we're putting our lives on the line because I have been hearing and about people getting killed yeah. in Toronto. There was a guy uh, today I was listening. He was from Iran or something, and he was one of the activists found dead. Um, there are a few people that have been just dropping dead, you know, because they speak up and stuff. And I like I said, I get threats. I get threats all the time online. They will come and they'll be like, one of the Mujahideen, did you see this guy was oh, yeah. from Pakistan? We're going to send one of your Mujahideen and to chop off your head. Yeah, they love this. This is their go-to. I mean, so my question to everybody is because um, 
during this issue, right, the prayer issue, um, there was this guy named Ravi Huda that said, you know, what's next? You know, are we going to have, I don't know, he's a camels and goats on the side. Yes. And are we gonna, Did he um, get you know, fired? Yeah, so anyways, his tweet was, oh my God, it was so Islamophobic. It was so Islamophobic, he got fired. Oh my, do you know I called his brokerage? I called his brokerage and I told his, uh, the guy who owns it, and I said, I said there was nothing wrong with what he said. I'm like, he said the truth. Yeah, maybe he used the words were a little insensitive, but what he was talking about was the truth. So you know what the guy told me? He's like, yeah, and I, I don't know if he's Hindu or Sikh, but he wasn't a Muslim. And he's like, well, uh, you know, they are in majority. Did you, you his words? They are in majority, and that was a little unsensitive. And you know, eighty percent of my uh, agents are Muslim. And I'm like, hmm. So, he's so basically, him? you just sold yourself for money. Well, when did we you know? all all these businesses become a mini court? Like, what what's going on? Uh, like, is there? Do we not have a judicial system here? And a police department, and why are businesses taking matters into their own hand? How do you feel now since you're talking about this? Justin mm -hmm. Trudeau recently banned guns, specific types, whatever. Yeah. yeah. And apparently he banned a Facebook page and a website <laughs> as well. Because oh, they're, they're doing that all the time. Like I was saying, you know, um, my computer was acting up weird. Yeah. My phone today was kind of acting up weird today so i wouldn't be surprised you know like they can do whatever they want like because the thing is when we talk about these things we come under radar oh. and for me i know definitely i'm under the radar because oh, yeah. i talk about a lot about pakistan and now i have been talking about the religion but it's never i've never like disrespected them in any way it's just that they feel disrespected so this is what i was saying that you know ravi huda he gets fired yeah and then I have these people literally threatening me, yeah. threatening to cut my throat. What is Pakistan doing about it? How come I don't see any outrage from no, people? No, no, no. How about we find who this guy is and get him fired? Like, how, why don't we do that? Forget that. Forget that. How about these uh, guys that are living in Milton, Oakville, and coming on my page, okay, um, on the comment section, I was having a comment with this one guy, and he's a hardcore liberal he's got a picture with justin trudeau oh yeah. you know so i was on his comment thread and i was posting and all of a sudden i see two fake profiles appear oh. and i can guarantee you it was him it was him because he couldn't say it with his own profile because he would get fired he works at a bank yeah. so he was coming up there and he's like talking about prostitutes like you blah 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 the way you're doing this the way you're doing that the way you're dressed these are guys in milton and there was one guy who said this openly in english he's like i am not scared so he posted there and i'm going to uh report him to the cops because that is hatred you know calling me a prostitute because i wear a bikini or whatever the case is if even if i was doing porn it's none of your business. Exactly. I'm in Canada. I'm allowed to do it. I'm not doing anything illegal. Nobody will put me in cops and take me away. But my point is, if for these men that are here, Islamists, I would say, not all of them think that way. Yeah. So for these men that think if a woman is showing a little cleavage or, you know, wearing a bikini or she's naked, she's a prostitute. Yeah. And we should take it. Yeah. We should not even say nothing about it because they're passing this judgment. Automatically, you're showing skin, you're a whore. Yeah. And I understand slut shaming exists here, but this is not slut shaming. This is way beyond that. So sad. then I'm like, okay, you know what? Since you're going to judge me on my clothes, well, I'm going to judge you on your clothes. Yeah. So a woman dressed up in a burqa, I don't know, she, garb, I think the garb terrorist, I'm going to judge her because she's a terrorist. Anybody in the burqa is going to be a terrorist to me. She's... um. What do you call a black tent like Ravi Huda said? He said it right. Or garbage bags that they say, you know? So I'm going to judge. If you're going to judge me on my clothes, yeah. guess what? I'm going to judge you because it's tit for tat. It's not that I'm going to sit there and be like, just ignore it. No, I'm going to call you out on this because it's enough is enough. You know, the we're in Canada. We're not in you. Like, that's the whole point. We're not in Saudi Arabia. We're not in Pakistan that we're listening to this bullshit. You just shouldn't have to. Well, but have you read, have you read mainstream media and how it defends 
the, it's always one-sided. It's always very, very unilateral to defend yeah. and protect one ideology. And the victims of this ideology are, they, I, have you gone to the media? Has the media listened to you about your complaints when these Islamist men attack you? Are they willing to publicize an article with the names and images and call them, oh, oh. you know, what brown supremacists, the same way they call their own white supremacists? Have you? Because I can't get no, the media's uh, attention. Is from media. Um, so two years ago when uh, Kevin Johnson, right? So I will oh. use Kevin. Kevin is a perfect example for what they want to do to you. Yeah. So Kevin was very much into it. And uh, I love Kevin. He is such a great guy. And um, so the prayers in school. Yeah. That whole thing started. First, first it was like, we just want to pray in school. No problem. You can have your prayers. But no, no, no. We want a special room. Special room for them. So we were like, well, you know what? Since we can't say Lord's Prayer in the morning, yeah. I think it's better that we have no religion in school. You know, because before I remember we used to do the prayers, you yeah. know, and stuff. But none of that is happening. Well, why do we have to have that too? And there was a whole issue so we went outside of school and we were protesting, right? And um, so what happened, it was a lot of women. My mom was there. There was an older woman, a lot of women, yeah. and only few men were there. This one young kid, he comes out, white kid, and he almost comes into the face of that older woman. Yeah. And um, so few people came up and then took him away. When the media reported on this, oh my God, it was the other way around. Yeah. We were the ones attacking them. Yeah. And I was like, I had the footage for the whole thing. It I had matter. the footage for the whole thing. And they grabbed this one um, girl and her mother. We saw them. And they were like, oh, they were screaming Islamophobic things. And they were saying that every single word was a lie. I was just like, they were like basically given a manuscript. Okay, you got to read this and this and this and this and go ahead with the agenda and then we move on. That's the media. I'm Pakistani. I'm brown. They were brown. But the only thing was, yeah. I guess, religion, uh, yeah, yeah. you know? And so it's always... I was like, oh my God, what's the point of going to the media? There's no, no point. None. They're sold. Have you looked at, I've been considering getting my gun license. Have you considered that at all? Do you think that that's a good idea? How do you feel about Trudeau banning guns well, now? I've been before, but now with the threats and stuff that is coming towards me, uh, I am thinking about it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I am thinking about it because it's becoming, especially for us women, you know, that are um, alone, you know, and I have a daughter. And for the thing is, before they could come after me, they could say stuff to me. So now what they do is a lot of people, they will come and talk shit about my daughter, right? They pick on her because. They're men. They can't pick with me. They know they can't do anything with me. The uh, you know they gotta come in that way. Yeah. So yes, definitely. I think for a woman, for her own um, security, I think they should have one. How, how else am I supposed to protect myself? Well, I do have my knives right by the door. I do keep my <laughs> knives right here, knife. just in case. <laughs> <laughs> just in case, you know, you never know. And you know, if any of you are planning to. Oh my god, I'd love and, to get my gun license. And I have cameras. I learned my lesson. I put up cameras. Not like somebody was threatening. I had yeah. weird tenants. So I put up cameras anywhere I live. I make sure that I have cameras, sensor cameras everywhere. Okay. You have you have to. There was a time I remember we could live in Canada. We didn't have to lock our doors. That time is gone. Time is gone. <laughs> With the taser. What have else? a high-powered mace. Maces are illegal, isn't it? Mace is illegal. Uh, Pepper spray mace. Yeah, I think for the most part, uh, you can't take it into like schools and whatnot. Like you can keep it in your home, but uh, now no. I wanted to, I wanted to see if people had any questions because I've been seeing, I've been ignoring the chat. Do you have anything you want to ask or do you want to say anything that I not? Train, train, train. It's not like riding a bike. Of course, Donna. Actually, Donna, I want to, you know, about the gun. So my father, yeah. when I was back home, always used to have a gun on him, right? He always had a handgun. Oh. So I always saw guns, you know, it, to carry a weapon in Pakistan is not a big deal. And then he used to go duck hunting and he would take me, yeah. right? And then I, now that he, she mentioned, I remember we were on the boat and he gave me the gun and I was young. I was like probably seven, eight. Yeah. 
yeah. and he's like shoot like you know and it's loud so i'm like this <laughs> yeah well, i have held it before good um but yeah if i was i have been planning to go to a gun range and just practice 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 it's good for taking out your frustration too you know oh gosh if yeah. you want to target shooting yeah yeah all right to what, the else, gun what else do you guys have questions for us i went through most of my questions uh with mahlij so let's see what you guys have any questions for both mahlij? have perfect eyebrows what these these guys like they both have uh, perfect eyebrows. It's, we're privileged with being hairy. We have hair we're everywhere. Hairy. It's all over here. Believe me, we're privileged and cursed. <laughs> okay, guys, you guys need to go check out www.concealcarrycanada.com. Uh, well, Kevin is awesome. He says we should have equal privileges in Canada for Christianity and other. Yeah, so like I said, you know, with this whole issue, um, they're going to come out uh, really hard. They're coming out. They're calling everybody hate, 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 uh, haters. And this is what they're, this is their um, way of shutting down things. That's how the articles are. Haters well, try they, eventually to. Eventually, people are going to get you know? sick of being called names, unfortunately, you know? Yeah. Uh, um, but the thing is that, like I was saying, from then onwards, it was. We want a prayer room in school. Yeah. Okay, well, they got the prayer room, you know. Uh, what was it after then they came? Oh, yeah, then they wanted M103 so they can gag us. We can't talk about it, yeah. you know, the hate speech thing. Um, then came this Azan thing, and it, it was supposed to be only for Ramadan. Mm -hmm. Then I also heard that, no, this is till the pandemic is over. And then I also heard from somebody that they're, they're planning to make this permanent five times a day. Yeah. Yeah, how would you guys it's 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 yeah. slowly changing but uh, i mean for oh geez for what it's worth conceal carry this is a movement going on right now they want to change gun laws to uh include guns for self-defense because right now in canada you can't own a gun for self-defense it, it can't happen and it's you can't gun, have a gun for self-defense no, really no for hunting and sport but not for self-defense there was a case in alberta where was it alberta i can't i don't know one of uh, the more conservative provinces someone was bro uh, there was a burglar and they shot him and the person that shot him went to jail so the that oh, no, wasn't wasn't that the guy that was a native guy he shot that's another one guy. and speaking of native conceal carry canada is run by native women Okay, guys. So I think no, that guy got off. He didn't go. He went to. They took him to court. Did they? But then, because uh, the it was they came to steal something from his yeah. uh, arm, right? Yeah, so yeah. The gun laws in this country. Yeah. I hope they. You know what I say? They, look, everybody, because everywhere that I have gone and argued, they come up with. They're smart, right? Yeah. They're gonna keep repeating the same thing over and over again, like yeah. Justin Trudeau does. Give them the same answer, same answer, same answer. Okay, and they keep repeating. This is democracy. It's our charter of right. You have right to religion. So I repeat. I'm like, uh huh. It is democracy. It is my charter of right. Yeah. It is my freedom from religion. You know, if somebody comes to my door, Jehovah's Witness or anybody, yeah. I can be like, no, thank you. Exactly. But what choice do I have here? If there's a mosque here, Allah Wakbar five times a day. Do I have a choice, or should I go? You know the best thing people need to do? Either all the gurdwaras, all the churches should now go to the counselors and be like, we all want to, because it's a pandemic right now, we're all under lockdown, okay? Let people come outside and be like in the parking lot, in the cars, or oh, forget it. No, no, you don't even have to be in the parking lot because they don't want us in the parking lot, right? In the cars, it's dangerous. Yeah. So churches should go on a loudspeaker and do their sermons yeah. so everybody in the home they can hear it we're missing god christians are missing god oh, too big time who is our god like what so we want to hear our sermons and the mothers they should do the same thing they should do their bhajans they should have a big mic gurdwaras everyone should do their thing live and loud i want a belly I dance loud. i want a belly or, dance or mosque. when the azan is going on, you go stand in front of a mosque and blast your music. <laughs> hey, it's your right. Well, what? 
you can't listen to music at that time. You're not supposed to if you're a Muslim. Uh, if there's a thing going on, you're not supposed to be playing music. That's haram. Okay. So I'm just saying that it's your right. You can do that. And I think the smart Christians, Hindus, instead of telling them to stop, they should start. And you watch what's going to happen after. And how many complaints we're going to get then? Well, I mean, if it's another ideology, for me, for me, the, when I hear the, the argument freedom of religion, freedom of religion also includes freedom from religion. From religion. Exactly. That's, that's what's missing right now in this. It's, it's we've gone back in time. <laughs> to war yeah. of religions you've got diversity you've got multiculturalism and now you've got multiple ideologies that truly dislike each other so what's the end See, here th this guy was telling me right like you guys are targeting only one religion and we're like we're not you singled yourself out yeah you guys did it brought this onto yourself by singling yourself out we didn't do anything we didn't even know like if you saw their meeting, did you see Bonnie Crummy's meeting that uh, they had, the counselors meeting that they had? A little bit. Like, there was no opinions taken. There was no research, no homework, no nothing done. Bonnie lied, saying that they're already doing it in uh, Brampton. I mean, lies were told to push this agenda on us. Why? Because she was in such a rush. We didn't even hear about it. Like, doesn't like these things take time? You have to put in your thought and stuff into it. That's so this has been going on since fall. Um, I don't know if you heard, but Duke University, I believe it was in the US. Yeah. That also, I was reading um, that they had applied to do prayers in Ramadan. Oh, you see how they work Duke. together? Duke. Yeah. How, how they work together. It's not only one canada that's happening and no, no they decided that they were going to do this yeah. and do it in all western countries so what happened up there they had to take it back because a lot of people pushed back and who was it saying that oh yeah they were going to stop giving donations and charities to the university so they had no choice uh -huh. hit them where it hurts pockets money oh, no. and, and bonnie oh. Crombie is financed uh, by islamists is she not Biggest one that uh, Bonnie hangs out with is, um, well, I don't know if I want to say his name, you know. Don't He's a very powerful man and uh, he can uh, ruin people's lives like he tried to do it with uh, Kevin. Ah. So Kevin is a perfect example how they will crush you and how they will uh, leave you. And Kevin is a perfect example of our failing democracy, yeah. our failing legal system. And uh, we have no rights, basically. Oh, trust yeah. me, we're, I know. So guys, what other questions do you have for Mahlid? Anybody has, sorry, I, I've been so busy chatting, I haven't been paying attention. Happy we smoke. Are, we're, all <laughs> smoking. <laughs> <laughs> we're all smoking something. Oh, I wish. I just uh, stopped from yesterday. I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna smoke anymore. <laughs> no one <laughs> me. But I'm just like, oh, you know, some of these days you really need one um, after all this is going on. And it's, um, you know, what affects me the most is because this was like my mom's dream that her daughters will come here and they will be able to live their lives free. Because my mom's life was ruined. You know, most of her younger years, they were ruined by uh, maniacs, you know. And um, now I have to think about it. I, I, can't, I can't believe that I am in that position that I have to think about it. Like, what is going to happen 10 years from now? Does, is my daughter, does she have to wear hijab? Like, you know, what's, where is it going? Um, and the thing, a lot of people are like, oh, it's the liberals. If you bring the conservatives, no. it's going to be different. No, they're everywhere. They're the in the conservative party. They buy everybody. Money does a lot of things. The thing is, our governments have become corrupt. Very. It's not like how I was before, where people had dignity, morals, and values. No. All these people have come here from different countries and taught everyone how to cheat and manipulate and, you know, bribe. Yeah. So everybody uh, loves money, and that's what it is. Well, money is not going to keep the freedom. Like, I, I keep telling people, everyone's focused on money. I speak to people about the situation we're in right now with the lockdown, and they're like, well, as long as the government pays me, I'm fine. 
And I'm like, for now, for now, I lived mm. 26 years as an elite in Saudi Arabia and I had zero freedom and I hated my life and I was, I did everything. I destroyed my, everything I created in that country to exit it. I had so much, yeah. like money wasn't even an issue for me. Yeah. Who well, it's, more... it's not money that brings you happiness. Like yeah. I have been through... When we came here, we came with three suitcases. And I remember when we were leaving and we were in a rush because we had to get on the plane. I remember that last ride we had in the car and I was just looking because if we were caught, yeah. we were dead. Yeah. Okay. Till that plane took off and landed in, uh, du was it in Dubai or England? We landed in England. And I was like, that's when we actually took a breath that, oh, you know, okay. nobody's following us. We came here with three suitcases, you know. Um, I came from a family that had money. We weren't rich, rich, but we had a person that used to come at home, cook and stuff. You know, I never had to get up and do all these things that I have to do. Then we came here and we lived in the bachelor and uh, one bachelor, me, my mom and my sister. Uh, forward to like another 15 years, I owned a beautiful house, four bedroom, everything. You know, there was time where I was making a lot of money. Then came another time when I was boom down, you know. But what I have found is that money is not really going to bring you happiness. You know, happiness is what you create. Exactly. It's not, yeah, money will take you to different places and do different things. But if you're smart, you don't really need money to travel and do all that. Thing. <laughs> you know, you can do it for free. Mahalik, who do you Just think is worse, free. the liberals or the conservatives? Who do you think has more Islamists in their party right now? Liberals or conservatives? Uh, right now, in liberals, definitely. But don't think that they're not in the conservative either. Oh, did you not see, uh, what is his name? Patrick Brown. Isn't he a conservative? Oh. <laughs> they're the same. They're, they honestly, they're the same. They they have like put their people in every party. They want it to be in everywhere. You know, if we need some person that doesn't need money, you know, like somebody like Trump, who was already rich. He didn't give a shit about his oh, yeah. little pay. Or So that's what we need. I'm not saying that Trump does everything right, whatever. I agree oh. with a few things with him and stuff. But we need somebody with a backbone. 100%. Until unless we have a leader or we need a different party. We need to have a different party. And as soon as we get a different party, like Max Bernier, you know, he yeah. started. But also, remember, he's also a politician. Yeah. You know? Yeah, he says certain things. He's also, uh, what do you call, um, there's a term for these politicians. Career, uh, career politicians. Right, yeah. So you got to be careful with these guys because they know. They know how to lie, how to manipulate. And to be honest, I give more respect to a prostitute yeah. than I do to a politician because a prostitute tells you, I'm going to do this and this and She's this honest. and this. Okay. She tells you straight up, no lies. And she gives you that service. Politicians with clients, no, I'm going to give you this and this and this and this. Give me your money. Yeah. And you get nothing. Yeah. So to me, morally, a politician is worse than a prostitute. At least a prostitute keeps her word. Yeah. <laughs> so if you want to be a politician, uh, think about it. Uh, be a vote of on confidence. You need a new party. We need people to stand up. Or there's going to be a revolution. Or there's going to be a revolution. That's what's going to happen. People are going to come out on street. They're going to have enough. And that's how it has happened in a lot of countries. I just hope Canadians get a little bit more of a spine going. And by the way, if you guys want to know what's going on with uh, conservatives, go to riseoftheislamists.com. Rise of the Islamists, one word, dot com. And you can see what the conservatives are doing. What else do you guys have for us? Uh, there's resistance, more organized and coordinated. Yeah. So the thing is that I have, uh, like I said, in 2017, that's when I started into this. And there's been people that do their Tariq Fateh that talks about it. Um, yeah. I've worked with him. He's very essential. There's Rahil Raza. There's people that are working towards it um kevin when he started yeah he was more um he doesn't sugarcoat his words basically right and he was yeah. more out there to be a target and he slipped up few places where they caught him. that's the only thing with him 
Um, otherwise, wh- why don't you think like the mainstream media highlights uh, Tarek Fateh? He's such a big name, you know. He's yeah. such a big name. Yeah. Did you ever see him on, uh, you know, CBC or any of those channels? No. Um, then we had Sandra Solomon. Then we had like a couple of these people that started. But the thing is, you gotta keep the message proper. Yeah. You cannot be having your own motivations in there. Exactly. I me speaking here. I don't have any alter, you know, motives that I want to accomplish. I want to destroy them. I no, my motive is that my child gets to live in a free country and enjoy the freedom and see the life how beautiful it is. And that's you know, right. that's what my motive that's your is. Right. That's and, what we all want, you know? Yeah. It needs to be organized. I'm I'm one person. All I can do I just speak about it that's all i can do i don't have that much money i don't have that much power to go up there you know and um like i said we don't get that much support you know we don't and that's just how it is because they're louder than us well let's hope this is a start i'm very happy that we did this today for what it's worth mahlij can you mention your instagram your uh-huh. uh youtube mm-hmm. people please support mahlij follow her she's amazing everything she does is amazing her makeup is amazing so, her clothes yeah, just are amazing. For Mali, my last name is sarkari i'm on instagram snapchat facebook um if you guys really want to see if you guys really want to see the abuse i get you have to go onto my facebook page not my profile go to my facebook page and you go into the comments and just translate the comments these are mostly people from pakistan um and it just it will just give you the insight about the mentality of people that are coming here because now we're just bringing everybody we're like ah whatever who gives yeah. a shit just come just come just come you know they are not the same mentality as us they don't look at women like people in Canada do okay according to them you should not have okay so this is something i want to mention um instagram mahalif sarkari um my website is mahalifsarkari.ca and i think that's it um a month ago this was in march yeah so in march you know we had the women's day yeah. so there was a march organized in pakistan you know women's march and everywhere it went so peaceful and everything so what happened uh, there is a woman that lives in um us her name is marvi sarmad and she was called on a pakistani channel yeah. there was a writer he writes for big dramas he was sitting there yeah. and they got into a little argument and this guy got so pissed when she said my body my choice he got so pissed he was like who wants your body look at yourself you're this you like he started swearing at her on national tv so everybody was like what the hell you can't do that You can't do that to a woman like you know whatever it was. So anyhow he got fired from the Good. TV channel he was working for. So I made a video on that, my body, my choice. Ah. And in that video I was swearing a little bit, but um I brought up valid points and that video went viral. Ah. It went viral like crazy. I gained like I don't know 50,000 followers after that. Oh, wow. And uh, you should have seen the comments underneath when it was circulating in Pakistan. it was all she's a prostitute or oh, she probably fucks this many people or she's this um this is a mentality all i was speaking up about was that a woman should have her own choice to get married to whoever she wants you know all i said was like little girls there was a little girl 6 year old that was raped okay and then thrown in trash and her video was then made and uh, it was released on the dark web So I have a 6 year old, you know. It it like you don't understand the feeling. So, you know, those were the points that I was making, but you should see these men fuming at me. <laughs> How dare she? They, you know, they hate themselves. These men. Yeah, and then I saw positive comments and positive comments, and I started seeing the names and I'm like it was all Indian names. So then the video had reached India. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, "Oh, okay." Like, no, I get it. I am not getting anymore. But just the mentality is not the same. You cannot mix oil with water. No. You know, it is very hard. You cannot. And I are like I swear I fight with them every time I go live. And now I have fans, my own fans, and they're Muslims too. And they're 
they put them down they'll fight for me so right. that's why i know that they're not all the same you know there's so many different kinds of muslims even amongst muslims they're fighting so yeah. much like you don't even understand the ahmadiyas are not even considered muslims yeah. they're being persecuted even though they're muslims you know it's just so complicated <laughs> it, it's it's like you they all they want to do is just fight that's all i say i'm like all you guys want to do is fight Conf all the time conflict what about love? Our in a part of the world thrive you would go on conflict. you would go to jail if you went and hugged somebody and kissed somebody no, no, okay no, haram. Oh, haram. no kissing no hugging if it's no affection they'll put you to jail but if you go slap somebody guess what it's okay <laughs> exactly it's the opposite so what do you guys think? Did you enjoy having Mahlij on today? Should we do more of this? What do you guys think? Of course, with Mahlij's permission, I'll talk to her after. But uh, give us some input if you enjoyed this little live stream with Mahlij. I love her. I want to have her on oh, every day. You know what? What we will do is please follow my YouTube. Uh, I have my YouTube. So I do go live. You have to see it when I go live. Okay. It's not because a lot of people are not probably here, or maybe some are here from okay. my channel. Um, I don't see many, but these are mostly your followers, right? So I would request you, if you guys want to see those comments and you guys want to see <laughs> me lose my mind, come up there. You know what? Sometimes, so uh, this is this is funny. So uh, Malvi, one of the priests in Pakistan, when Corona started, so everybody was doing telethons. They did a telethon and the Malvi came to do the prayer. Oh and then he comes there and he says, Corona started because of all these vulgar women. Oh, so, and uh, yeah, a couple of things he said, right? He was like, media is fake. I agree with that, you know? Yeah. And um, he's only saying that because media kicked him out now. That's why. So the, the thing was, I was live one day and I took this guy on a call. And I asked him because he was in favor. He's like, I'm in favor. I'm like, do you think Corona came because of women like me and dressing like this? He's like, of course. Oh. And I'm like, oh, so I'm like, so if I go naked, then I can just kill you, can't I? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Like, I'm like, why don't we all just go naked? Kill all you motherfuckers, man, that have a problem with us. Yes. The thing that we <laughs> There's a grand idea. Maybe our next... Our next show. There you go, guys. Something to bring you back. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank Mahlid. you so much for having me. It was so much fun. Naughty girls, those Corona women. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll let you. What? You was so funny because he kept saying that, why are you wearing these clothes in Ramadan? He's watching me from Pakistan in Canada. And I'm like, okay, listen to me. I'm like, why? How about you close your eyes? And then he just listened to me. You don't have to watch me. He's like, no, I don't want you, yeah, man. I'm telling you, the IQ level is <laughs> zero. <laughs> I like having fun with them because honestly, it gives me content and my viewers like <laughs> how I roast them. I roast them to good. Keep it up, Mahlid. We love you. <laughs> Thank you uh, so much. It was so much fun. Uh, I hope you guys all enjoyed it. Um, yeah. Thank you. All right, guys. Uh, Bye. All right. Take care, guys. We'll see you later.